Hello, Blooming Precipice here. As I said before, I wanted to do a video on analyzing every character in Honeypot. So today, I wanted to prove that Aiko Yumi is the least lovable of all the Honeypot waifus. But then again, that's not really that bad because I love all the Honeypot waifus a lot. I'll admit that this was quite difficult. I knew that the lore on Honeypot characters was sparse, but that was the exact reason that I wanted to do this. I relished this challenge and poured over every detail I could find on Aiko. From her preferences, to her texts, to her gifts, anything I could find. I'm kind of torn because I don't actively dislike Aiko. It's just that she's the girl that I dated the least in Honeypot. But why Aiko? Aiko is talented, smart, beautiful, and uninhibited. She's someone who won't judge you despite your kinks. When you lay it all out like that, she seems like the perfect wife. Just have a look at some of her questions and answers. When she asks, do you prefer to know your partner's sexual history? The ideal answer is, yeah, I like to know what I'm getting myself into. And she furthers that by saying, yes, I know this is pretty messed up, but it kind of turns me on to know. This implies that she's not afraid to talk openly about sex and explore her sexuality, unlike others, such as Belly. And I can admire that. She's someone that you can just be yourself around. Aiko isn't hesitant about what she likes. She likes sex and she embraces that. I Aiko also happens to be into BDSM as a female dominatrix, as implied by her line in the bedroom scene saying, I'm a naughty teacher and you've been a bad boy, which fits the school teacher kink perfectly. She also asks you, what is your most screwed up fancy? And the ideal answer is, I want to be chained up and dominated, to which she replies, That can be arranged. Which I admit is pretty hot, because I'm a submissive male. Then again, I do want to say that BDSM is not about chains, ropes or whips. BDSM is about trusting your partner to care about you, to truly love you, feeling wanted and to care about others. It's not about hurting someone else. It's the idea that you could be so precious to someone else that they'd tie you up and nurture you. I admit, I do admit that I wish there was more content based around her being a female dominatrix because there's pretty much only two or three lines throughout the entire game. Perhaps an extra scene where she pushes you against the wall and confesses her love for you. I don't know. She also likes to be choked as she says in the bedroom scene and you might be like, wow, that's so messed up. First of all, it isn't about wanting to be hurt or abused by your partner. To be clear, that is completely the opposite of anything related to BDSM. Although I'm not personally into choking, whatever you're into is okay, as long as it's safe for both you and your partner. Especially with more dangerous kinds of play, including breath control play, you really need to be careful and safe because it can be dangerous. Furthermore, Aiko is intelligent, having a master's degree in mathematics, which was a six year course before graduating and becoming a professor. And as the Honeypop Wiki says, she managed to acquire a doctorate, which requires writing a thesis and such. And correct me there if I'm wrong. However, doesn't that all mean that Aiko is the ideal waifu? How could she possibly be the worst waifu in Honeypop? Well, the first nail in the coffin is Aiko doesn't really care about you at all. You're just a casual fling to her. This is portrayed through one of her questions and answers, in which she asks, longest relationship you've ever had? My longest? Probably a year and some change. To which she replies, same here. I don't like to be tied down for too long. Which implies that she isn't serious about this relationship between you and her. She doesn't really care about you. Combined with the fact that when you answer incorrectly, she says, 
Yeah, I had you figured like that. And figures. She's so nonchalant about you being incorrect and the nature of your relationship, calmly accepting you're dating other girls because she simply doesn't care about you. But that isn't even the worst thing. The key thing that makes Aiko such an undesirable choice for a waifu is that despite being so successful, Aiko is dissatisfied. She spends her time drinking, as can be seen by her willingness to drink at any time during the day, drinking her problems away instead of facing up to them. Furthermore, as Aiko herself states, her hobby is gambling, to the point that she's in massive debt. Although I admit that could be her just joking. And I don't need to tell you about how destructive these vices are. Casinos are a business. The house always wins. They are there to exploit you. But that doesn't really make me hate Aiko. I just think it's tragic. I couldn't draw a double standard because I do like Audrey and I really wish I could be with her to help her lead a better lifestyle. However, the thing is with Audrey, I can see this soft side to her, this loving and shy side to herself that's been hurt one too many times. So she attempts to hide it with a facade when she's desperately crying out for someone to care about her. Aiko on the other hand, all that I can see is an empty hollow shell. The real key thing that makes me dislike Aiko is that she's so dissatisfied but she doesn't try to do anything about it. She lacks ambition. As Jonah said because he also made a video on Aiko, Aiko embodies unfulfillment and what he says in the video is that makes her relatable. But for that exact same reason, I dislike her. Because although she has accomplished a lot in her life, somewhere along the way she just stopped trying. Aiko wallows in despair about her dissatisfaction instead of doing something about it. This ambition and drive is why I find Kiana attractive. Because she strives to make something of herself. And she holds on to these dreams of being a famous celebrity. I like seeing people succeed. I like having that flair of ambition, and Aiko doesn't have any of that. She just resorts to drinking. And as with the other characters, Aiko's preferences tell us a lot about her character. And it's ironic because Aiko's least favorite token is talent, despite having so much of it as seen from her master's degree. Aiko stopped caring and eventually began to resent her talent. And, gam and drinking and gambling as a form of rebellion and eventually giving up altogether. This is further substantiated by the fact that her favorite gifts are from the toy category. She treasures, she treasures these gifts because they remind her of her childhood innocence, perhaps when she wasn't so depressed and still had the drive to achieve. And you know, maybe if there's something about in the story, maybe if there was something in the story about helping Aiko to stop being depressed and having the opportunity to truly date her, Aiko genuinely falling in love with you, maybe she would have been one of my favorite waifus. But that just isn't there. If you just have a look at Aiko's description, you'll see what I mean. She's uncertain of what she really wants to do with her life and is really just coasting through her days, often miserable or borderline depressed. Despite this, she's a very humorous person and uses jokes and laughter as a means to temporarily escape or mask her general misery. And there's something that I found pretty interesting here and it comes through her dialogue as well and it's that she uses laughter as a means to temporarily escape or mask her misery, which I find makes her story all the more tragic because she hides her misery, thinking that she can mask her sadness from others. With that in mind, we can revisit the first dialogue that 
most players see her in the uh, during the university or when you first visit the university. I'll just play a small section. Oh, Misumi, I'm glad I ran into you. Have you had a chance to grade our exams yet? Uh, remind me what that was on again? You know, the conservation of whatever you call it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think those are on my desk. Somewhere. Oh, okay. Do you know when you might be able to get them back to us? Later. Next week, probably. I'm sure you did fine, Tiffany. You think? I hope so. I don't know, I was having trouble with some of the material. Do you know what we're going over next week? I'd like to try and get a head start this time. Next week? I don't know yet. Actually, I have a pounding headache right now. Can we do this later, please? Yeah, okay. Sorry to bother you, Miss Yumi. No, it's fine. I'll talk now, what does this scene really tell us? Well, apart from the fact that Aiko is kind of pushing away my favorite vanilla ice cream, Tiffany, who I feel really sorry for because she's so kind and good-natured and cute and adorable. <laughs> it's that Aiko, by her wallowing in despair and giving up, hurts others that she cares about. Wait, wait, wh wh what do you even mean? Well, let me try to explain. Although it's illustrated that Aiko is annoyed with Tiffany in this scene, I would argue that Aiko does care about Tiffany as one of her adorable students. Although she may hate the university, she wants her students to have bright futures. You can see this from Aiko tutoring Nikki in the bonus art and accepting the request to help out Tiffany later. However, by Aiko wallowing in despair, she stops herself from being able to help Tiffany, someone she cares about. Sure, this is a relatively harmless example, but if we view this as a microcosm of how Aiko treats those who she cares about, inadvertently lashing out at others who are close to her because she's dissatisfied with life, we can see the harm she inflicts upon those around her. Without realizing it, Aiko hurts those who care about her because she can't move forward. Altogether, this paints a portrait of why I think Aiko Yumi is the worst waifu in Honeyball. Then again, these are just ideas that I attach to my own interpretations and feelings to. I know I said that movies and games aren't so much about imagination, that, was, that that was writing, because writing merely creates a suggestion, and the reader interprets all the rest on their own. But after having thought about this, I think that's not really the case. I think despite being able to see everything in the world of Honey Pop and any game, it's still only ideas. The gentle suggestion to the mind that a video game, a movie, or a book creates, relying on the reader to find their own meaning. Okay, and that's it. Ah, I didn't manage to make the 30 minute mark uh, on an analysis of Ico, but you know what? I'm happy with this video as it is. I wouldn't want to drag it out any longer just to say I've made this video 30 minutes and the video feels like it's finished. It's And it's telling me that this is an apt ending. So thank you for being here. You are my lifeblood. Looming precipice out.